Hello, everyone. My name is Nikhil Chandrappa. Uh, I work as a platform architect at Pivotal, and I specialize in data services that is uh, coming out of the platform. And I'm co-presenting this talk with Pulkit. Hey, my name is Pulkit Chandra. I'm nowhere related to this guy, uh, <laughs> but I work with him, and I'm the product manager for PCC. Cool. So just a safe harbor statement, we will we'll be making uh, a few uh, forward-looking statements in our presentation. So our legal wants us to have that slide. <laughs> yeah. So all of us uh, probably have used Waze, right? Uh, Waze app is used for navigation purpose in our daily life. There was a very interesting talk that uh, SRE from Waze actually did uh, last year in a Google Cloud conference where he talked about how they went multi-cloud uh, across AWS and GCP. So he specifically uh, points out uh, S3 AWS outage they had, which they barely survived, uh, due, to, due to which they, they were persuaded to uh, th thinking of uh, putting their workloads onto GCP as well as AWS. Uh, as you see from the statement that they have made, now since their architecture is, going, is gone multi-cloud, they are better positioned to survive like a DDoS, DNS attack, or even a region failure in the IaaS provider, or even a global failure in the cloud provider itself. They have that kind of resiliency built in in, in their multi-cloud uh, deployment. So there are some of the key things that he talked about is about automatic uh, pipelines, right? Uh, these are a few things he talked about. One of them was an automatic pipeline, where the pipeline needs to understand if uh, whenever a region is, becomes unhealthy, automatically it needs to go and spin up uh, uh, services and apps onto uh, another region which is already healthy. And there are like a few other canary uh, deployments that you need to uh, keep in mind or can be interesting, like blue green deployment, where if you push a deployment for some reason, the deployment doesn't go through, it, you need to be able to do a quick rollback of uh, all those changes that was pushed. It's just not building that sophisticated CACD pipeline, right? They also uh, talk about how having a, a redundant data, which is spread across multiple uh, uh, clouds, really helped in uh, uh, the near miss scenario they had. Uh, however, there are like some other real world outages we have seen uh, uh, that happen over the years, right? Like uh, probably a lot of us have seen these tweet feeds where uh, some of the major digital uh, companies like Netflix, Airbnb, or Pinterest going down, and they're reporting their services are down. So this is, uh, this is not only the, uh, these uh, services being down, it's not only affecting the user, uh, user behavior or the user experience, so it also affects the uh, uh, revenue that is involved uh, with these applications. So it, is very, it becomes very important for us to have a highly available system, and hence people are moving towards a real uh, multi-cloud environment. Let's see some of the main reasons for moving to multi-cloud, right? Whether it is a private cloud or public cloud, there is like interruptions bound to happen through a network switch failure or a load balancer going down. And the same goes true for infrastructure as well. So your uh, data center uh, or the racks in your data center might go down, or your public IaaS regions might go down, right? So, uh, or you might be experiencing a DNS DDoS attack. This is not that unfrequent. There's like a lot of uh, reports out there where this happens very frequently for some of these uh, digital companies. In such situations, it is very important to uh, have business continuity, which directly ties to uh, revenue, right? Or else directly ties to revenue loss, or it might take a hit in developer productivity as well. So rather than uh, developers working on the features, they might be pulled in to doing firefighting for getting all the ads back up in the production. So in order to uh, avoid such things, we actually need multi-cloud. So another important reason for multi-cloud is user experience. So now we have a bunch of, uh, 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 a bunch of uh, uh, cloud native design patterns or the platform itself or CI CD pipelines or chaos testing. So all those things are already uh, available or, uh, on the Pivotal Cloud Foundry platform. 
and enterprises are actually moving towards uh, doing a such kind of deployment. However, we have seen in the enterprises where all these apps are trying to, or all these microservices are trying and connecting to a single data center or single database which is hosted in the main data center. So that uh, results in latency, right? So that, uh, that's why it becomes important to have redundancy in your data, uh, data also. So consider a, uh, consider a situation where uh, you have users in Asia, and they are making requests to a US database. Obviously, there is some uh, network latency involved uh, in, s in such architectures, and it results in poor user experience. So Google recently, or some of the, one of the Google SRE, talked about how introducing like even a 100 millisecond lag or a latency in their uh, request will result, will result in 20% reduction of the Google search users. That is pretty high impact, right, for just a 100 millisecond uh, uh, a latency that is involved for making a request to another data center for entering data. So uh, ap apart from that, it's also other, uh, other, uh, 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 other features that is required for a multi-cloud-based uh, deployment is having uh, high availability. So high availability becomes really important where you might have a, a deployment topology where you are uh, uh, deploying the apps in an active-passive fashion or deploying the uh, data in an active-passive uh, fashion as well, where if for some reason your active data center goes down, uh, you, will be, uh, you can switch the traffic to the standby, whereas because there is a hot standby already in place. And there is uh, other uh, design patterns that, are, that can be used for uh, highly available multi-cloud deployments, which we will be talking about later in the presentation. So another uh, important reason for going multi-cloud is like business requirements. So in banking, banking industry, there are compliance requirements which uh, requires, uh, which, uh, 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 which states that you need to have your uh, data in different data centers at, apart by at least 200 miles. So those are the requirements which, uh, which uh, uh, warrants you to go for a multi-cloud architecture. So in this presentation, what we wanted to highlight is how caching plays an important role in microservices architecture when you start deploying it across two foundations, right? Uh, back in 2016, uh, there was a, a presentation that Netflix did in a Strange Loop con uh, conference. It's a, a, very, a very nice talk from uh, uh, Netflix SRE where they open source their caching infrastructure. Uh, it is like uh, internet scale uh, in caching infrastructure, whatever they have. And this caching infrastructure uh, pretty much improves the user experience as all the requests that you see in a Netflix app, whether it can be logging information or uh, the recommendation information, everything is being cached in their EV cache infrastructure. And if you see some uh, numbers that they put out. This is like some astronomical numbers, right? They have like terabytes of data that they have and uh, trillions of operations they do. And uh, they have like thousands of uh, servers and hundreds of clusters. And they also spread all these uh, data in a redundant fashion in three different regions. But the one important thing to notice is there are like only four engineers maintaining this entire EV cache infrastructure. So, this kind of acted as a motivation for us at Pivotal to come up with uh, such a uh, caching framework, which is not only scalable, uh, linearly scalable, highly available, it also supports uh, uh, automatic provisioning. So as Nikhil mentioned, this basically formed the basis of us trying to discover and understand how can we help. Basically, we asked a question as Pivotal, how can we help? And this is the answer that we came up with. So Pivotal Cloud Cache, or PCC, is a distributed in-memory cache optimized for PCF applications. Um, what it means is that it actually shards data. You can actually horizontally scale this uh, product. And it stores data in memory for fast accesses. All the reasons, as Nikhila mentioned, that formed the basis of all the challenges that uh, enterprises have in a multi-cloud multi environment. 
It also does automated, uh, automated provisioning and management. Uh, thanks to Bosch, uh, you don't really have to spin up uh, resources before you actually want to use them. All you have to do is just CF create service, and it gives you that seamless experience that you're really looking for. And it gives you a nice management plane where you can actually manage the cluster easily. It's also high available. Uh, one of the reasons is that this is a clustered environment. So a single VM going down is not really a big impact to the cache. The reason is it, it shards the data, and there is secondary copies that quickly become primaries. And because of that architecture, you can easily scale it with a simple command CF update service, and you want 10 servers, sure, it will just scale everything, and it will distribute the data again in 10 servers. So that's, that's been one of the ways that we have thought about this solution. Um, another thing that to keep in mind is that it's fault tolerant or no single point of failure. As I mentioned, it's a clustered service. It's dividing the data. And if the VM goes down, it doesn't really impact that much uh, to the service. And it has, if, because at the end of the day, it's in-memory cache. But it does have disk-based persistence. That means it can actually store the data synchronously on the persistent disk store, which is managed by separately from the VM by Bosch. So even if the VM gets lost, the disk persistence can always be reattached. So that ensures that even if in some catastrophic event where the whole uh, cluster goes down, you can quickly come back up, the Bosch actually spins it back up and hydrates the cache quickly. So that availability is also there. It's WAN replicated between different data centers or PCF foundations. So it actually understands as a first class concept that which foundation am I installed in, and it then does the replication asynchronously between foundations. And that's how we achieve the ultimate level of resiliency that we were talking about initially. And it's PCF AZ aware. What that means is that when you're sharding the data, and uh, there, is, there are availability zones within your PCF foundation. If a single availability zone goes down, it takes, let's suppose, n number of servers with it. The way sharding works for us is that we never keep the primary and secondary in the same availability zone. So if a single AZ is going down, the data loss doesn't really happen. Now let's zoom in into how, how are we achieving all these things. So, as I mentioned, first point, which is uh, if a single VM goes down, we fall back to the secondary pretty quickly, um, and it's re replaced transparently. It's a consistent system. It's a CP system in CAP theorem, so it's consistent and partitioned system. So it focuses on the fact that if the VM goes down, you will never have a condition where a VM goes down and you have an inconsistent state in the cluster. Because the rep when, the, when the data entry happens or the put happens, it does that synchronously across primary and the secondary copy. Uh, as I mentioned, the data can be replicated uh, to other clusters uh, via WAN replication. And uh, it does handle network segmentation. What that means is that, let's suppose within a cluster, if there is a network event that happened, it quickly goes into a quorum calculation mode where that it calculates what is the weight of individual, uh, basically, uh, clusters that have split up. So this is the split brain scenario, and in which whosoever loses the quorum starts, stops accepting the inserts or serving the reads. So that ensures, again, in a case, in a scenario of a network partition, the consistency is given the highest priority, and that ensures that the data in whichever system it actually, or whichever brain it actually ends up in, it's just that is the source of truth. There are no two copies. And, uh, Obviously, the data is persisted. This persistent disk is um, maintained by Bosch and reattached to VM if the VM gets lost. So it's pretty reliably uh, works there. And this persistence goes also synchronously all the way to the disk. Um, and it also recognizes what client application it's connecting to. So it stores the information of the client. And for some reason, if your application is deployed in Diego cell, the cell goes down. It remembers that there is a client Maybe it has registered interest, and it has some events which is que queuing up. If the client comes back up, it actually replays all those events in the right order. And that kind of gives you that uh, insurity that no matter what is happening, either on the server side or on the application side, 
you're always ended up in a correct state. Now, there are, there are two sides of the coin when it comes to operating PCC. Uh, one is the developer story, and second is the operator story. So for operators uh, provisioning a PCC cluster, the way it does is you, you basically, we start to think about how do we solve, like what does our PCF operator do? So the PCF operator basically creates uh, what you call it as the cookie cutter format, where it basically stamps, it creates the stamps or the format or the manifest that's gonna, f uh, and fills in what resources, if someone, a uh, developer spins up a cluster, what resources it should assign to it. So that's what a PCF operator does, and we call those plans. Um, and then also, also decides the degree of self-service a developer would choose do we want developers to do everything in the system, or there are some options that we don't want developers to get, you know, get exposed because maybe the infrastructure is not prepared yet, maybe the metrics are not prepared yet, or the uh, security is not done yet. So you can actually choose all those things, fine-grained control, at the plan level. And uh, there are obviously essentials for PCC app dev, which goes back to should we use Spring or should we use Java APIs? What do we want to use? And those are the kind of operate uh, things that uh, PCC developers care about. And there are projects like Spring Data Gemfire, Spring Boot Data Gemfire, which are awesome, and they pro and we are 100% compatible with them, and it just works seamlessly. So the typical workflow that it looks like is that you have these service plans, as I spoke about. It has uh, fields like defining the VMs, uh, defining the memory that's going to be assigned to the each individual VM how much CPU should be provided to them, and how much this should be provided to them. At this time, nothing is allocated. This is just a plan. And uh, after that, you can actually also define quotas, which are your boundaries within which developers can self-serve. So you can have the maximum cluster size. You can have maximum number of servers inside a single cluster. So there, there are, there are multi oh, sorry, maximum number of clusters across the foundation. So you have two level of controls. And then once you deploy the PCC broker, uh, max, it, it's, it's gonna spin up one single VM for the broker itself. Nothing else gets spin up. It's just gonna save that manifest or that uh, plans and keep it. And as and when, when the developer actually tries to create, um, that's when the resources are assigned. Cool. So we are gonna run uh, a few demos now like how, what, what's the developer experience will look like on the platform and how the plan and all gets enabled. Uh, let me pull up, okay. So let's say Pulkit is my operator, my PCF operator. I went to Pulkit and I said, dude, I went to uh, Spring One conference and I heard about uh, PCC multi-cloud and uh, I want PCC on the platform. So he went ahead and installed uh, uh, installed PCC uh, PCC tile, and if you see in the marketplace, as and well, he went ahead and uh, configured all the plans, and he just uh, he went ahead and say apply changes, and it went uh, ops manager uh, goes and installs PCC tile and registers it with the marketplace. So you will see a service offering called Pivotal Cloud Cache. If you click on Pivotal Cloud Cache, right now I have few plans enabled for me. So I have an extra a small plan, which is like my t-shirt size, where uh, probably it has uh, three locators and four cache servers. Four cache servers is something where the data gets uh, actually stored. So I will be using that if I need a HA plan. For development plan, I have a single node plan, which where I don't want to overutilize all the uh, VM resources. And I have a third plan, which is called as a geo-replicated plan. So I'll come to the geo-replicated plan later. For now, let's go ahead and see how a simple uh, plain vanilla PCC cluster gets uh, provisioned, right? So I select the extra small plan. I'll say select this plan. And I will uh, create a given name for that instance, say Spring One Platform Demo. The space, let's let it go to dev space. For now, we don't have an app. If you already pushed an app, you can just directly bind that app to a uh, uh, PCC service. It knows how to go ahead and bind it to it and parse VCAP services uh, and stuff like that. So 
Well, right now, what's happening is uh, PCC, it is uh, uh, getting uh, pre provision dynamically. Uh, behind the scene, Bosch goes ahead and creates all the VMs and bootstraps it with PCC service. It probably takes around uh, four to uh, four to five minutes, depending upon the IaaS for the cluster to come up. Uh, this actually shows the power of uh, uh, self-service for users, and also like the waste point of view when they when they said you are you should have dynamic pipelines so that uh, whenever a region goes down, you should quickly go ahead and start a new a new uh, start and go deploy uh, the, uh, your apps and your services on the new region, right? So such. Uh, self-service, uh, which platform provides, uh, improves your CI/CD uh, pipeline deployment across multi-cloud platforms. Also, uh, in the in the interest of time, we already have uh, provisioned a PCC cluster uh, before the session. So, in order to access any service instance on PCF, right, we will have to create a service key. So, we have a service key here called Info. Uh, if you see here, there's like a bunch of information that it gives out, like what is the connection information, what are the management UIs for your cluster, and things like that. Yeah, I, I know there is like uh, password being shown. I'll go ahead and delete it after this session. <laughs> Got to be secure. Yeah, it will be secure. So now let's go to uh, the cool demo, right? The way we want to see how PCC helps us in multi cloud deployment. So this is what we have. This is a topology we are trying to uh, achieve. I have boot applications which is running in uh, uh, US Central uh, in, on GCP Foundation. And also, I have apps running in Europe West on GCP. So our demo, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have deployed all these. Uh, uh, we have deployed our Spring Data uh, Geode or Spring Data Gemfire PCC client applications on these two foundations. Uh, before we can go ahead and create a, a geode or a, a geo replicated uh, cluster, right? What we need to do is my uh, network team or the infra, infra team has to set up a, a secure VPN tunnel. Or uh, the only prerequisite is my VMs, which are running in one service network, they need to be routable in the other foundation. In order to achieve that, there's one of the way that Google or GCP provides is to set up a, a Google VPN. Right now, in our demo, what I have done is I have set up a Google VPN, a VPN gateway, and I have two tunnels running from US Central to US Central to Europe, and also I have one other uh, pipeline coming from Europe West to US Central. Uh, let me quickly switch screens and go to the apps. So this is uh, this, clus uh, this cluster which you see here, which is called Alhambra. This uh, this is actually in US uh, e uh, US Central, and this foundation which you see Apple Valley. This is in uh, uh, Europe West Foundation. I have uh, similarly I have uh, two apps running uh, here. Uh, and also, I have a service running on both the foundations. Uh, so this uh, service, what we have to do is to get uh, get the uh, both the cluster talk to each other. So in our service information, we have something called as WAN credentials or the WAN gateways under credentials. So all these creden these credentials needs to be exchanged between two clusters, and it is just like running a CF command. It can be uh, orchestrated through your pipeline. And uh, this is like a one-time setup. You don't have to uh, do it uh, uh, all, like that often. It's like whenever you, you have a team, whoever wants, wants to have a geo-replicated cluster, you, you do it for the first time. Uh, that's, uh, that will enable WAN replication for all the regions within PCC. So region is nothing but like a synonymous to table within uh, uh, PCC. That's where actual data gets stored. You just do this setup one time, and you can replicate uh, all the data, uh, all the data which are sitting in different regions between both the foundations. So, uh, in this demo app, what are what we are doing is we are uh, generating some uh, uh, fake uh, JFairy customer data, where I'm inserting this into a customer region. 
So whenever I insert the data in US Central, it goes and van replicates onto my Europe West uh, uh, cluster. Let me get, uh, go ahead and start the van replication from US Central. Let's see if this is up. So I'm inserting like just four records at a time so that we can see the visualization of how the data is getting replicated. If you see here, uh, whatever the data I am writing on the US uh, uh, Central Foundation is getting replicated here. This is the single one, one directional, uh, unidirectional replication of the data. Uh, it can be used for like say active standby or active hot standby kind of uh, one replicated setup. Now I'll start a, uh, another, uh, I, I start uh, the van replication from the Europe Foundation so that we can have bi-directional or uh, active active setup. If you see here, my U US, oh, Europe West, uh, I should be start. Uh, uh, I, I should be start writing the data here. I should be seeing uh, US Central. Coming up. Oh, sorry. It uh, 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 <laughs> the scroll bar went. So if you see here, all my uh, uh, data that is coming from the uh, U.S. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Europe West region is getting uh, persisted even on my uh, U.S. Central region. So this is like a, a bi-directional WAN gateway that we call within PCC, where uh, it kind of uh, opens up a lot of other design patterns for you to solve uh, within enterprise, right? So uh, as we talked about how data redundancy becomes important in an active-active foundation, so uh, Pulkit is going to talk about some of the design patterns we have uh, that we have seen over the years running uh, 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 Apache Geode in production. So we feel the same uh, uh, design patterns will also uh, hold good for when, we, when you move all these ap applications or the workloads onto multi-cloud. Oh, there's one other thing that I wanted to showcase is like you can hook up uh, monitoring metrics, uh, say a Datadog or uh, Prometheus uh, whatever is the monitoring of your choice in your enterprise, and you pretty much get all the metrics that are uh, available. Uh, there are like a bunch of metrics available uh, for uh, gateway senders and receivers where you can monitor and set alerting. Like for some reason, if your queue size is like uh, increasing and, and you feel that the uh, data is not getting uh, drained to our other foundation, you can uh, go ahead and uh, uh, notify somebody, or else you can notify your CI pipeline to uh, spin up a new foundation and start replicating data there. Uh, before we move on to uh, design patterns, right, there are a couple of gotchas that you need to understand when you're having a multi-cloud deployment, right? So reliable data replication becomes really important. So what, what I mean by that is, obviously, you, if you are running your uh, application in an active-active uh, active, active setup, there might be some uh, 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 resolutions that conflicts that might occur because of which you might have to do some resolutions. So PCC has a default resolution, which is uh, time uh, timestamp based. If you want to have like a more sophisticated way of handling conflicts, you can go and deploy custom code onto PCC, and it uses your uh, custom conflict resol resolution for having a, a consistent data or a reliable data in both the foundations. And uh, obviously, right, like we are deploying. Uh, these foundation, uh, these apps across two different foundations. There is uh, network latency, so between U.S. Central and Europe West, there is a hundred millisecond latency that Google says uh, the SLA, SLO, SLO for those uh, the network between these two foundations is like hundred milliseconds. So as a enterprise architect or app developer, I need to uh, design for that uh, latency and also for the eventual consistency that my uh, applications. Uh, 
uh, applications will uh, go into. So these are some of the gotchas uh, that you might have to, uh, have to keep in mind when you are uh, architecting with a multi-cloud deployment. All right. Uh, so that was an awesome demo. So we can actually, but it was still simple. We had two different clusters on two different foundations talking to each other and sharing data. Uh, that's the most, the most simplistic design that we can think about. But obviously, it gets more sophisticated as you start to think about what are your use cases? How can you actually leverage these basic building blocks to solve business problems? And when we think about that, what Nikhil showed you was this bi-directional replication. Now, there could be instances where you want to invest time in ensuring that the two foundations are always in sync and the same uh, instance of the Spring Boot app would be living in both these foundations and talking to both the clusters and expect the same results. Now, that's pretty common in doing any kind of active-active system. This could be a uh, simple uh, credit card application that could be just hitting all these two things and showing you some, uh, some details about your account or it could be a uh, e-commerce e application which might be showing you uh, contents on your cart. So, and the advantage that you get is the, the near, the more application, the, the closest it is to your cluster, it'll see a huge performance benefit. As Nikhil mentioned, there is a ping delay of 100 milliseconds that is there between the two foundations by Google itself. So if you have one application running in one foundation and talking to some other uh, location cluster, you're going to see that delay. So to, in order to avoid that, this particular design pattern really works well. Then the blue-green deployment, as Nikhil was mentioning, that you could actually have an active standby or hot standby that let's suppose that you have uh, your microservices which are talking to both these clusters as it is in the previous case, and one of the foundation has a problem and the whole cluster goes down. So one of the best things that you can do is uh, you can actually reroute your boot applications to talk to the other one. Yes, there will be a delay, but at least you have the business continuity right there. So the, the overall impact to the business gets really, really reduced. Now you can do some, um, you know, uh, there, are, there are a lot of tools that actually help you point uh, a, your APIs to other foundations, uh, Apigee and things like that, that you can actually use in this uh, particular design pattern. Um, getting into more sophisticated uh, design patterns, we can actually consider a CQRS design pattern, which is command query resource segregation. And in that, what you are saying is, you have two different foundation, and you have a get app and a put app. Uh, each one of them is doing their own operations and specifically handling a particular area or a particular use case. And it goes ahead and interacts with the cluster and inserts the data or reads the data. The idea behind it is that you could actually divide the load that is going to be on a single cluster and now it's going to be divided into two, so you can actually, in theory, handle more load overall from an application standpoint. And that becomes a really powerful design pattern. Uh, the reason why I call this, a, in general, advanced device design pattern, because I never recommend people to start with this. This is a complicated design pattern. You should always build something simple and eventually reach to this if you really need to. Otherwise, a bi-directional application works awesomely in an active-active system. I just wanted to add one point for this uh, CQRS design pattern, right? So uh, PCC itself has a very uh, resilient eventing framework. Uh, some of the WAN gateway events that we get, right, it can be actually persisted. And also, if there is a, a network split or for some reason uh, there is uh, no connectivity between two clusters, it's able to like queue all those events. And then uh, whenever the network connectivity comes back up, it can drain all the events. So there is a resiliency built in out of the box, or you get out of the box uh, from the product. And it also is very tunable, configurable for your use case. Yeah. Um. The next design pattern is more like, it's more like hub and spoke, where you actually can have a primary cluster who's handling most of the data and is replicating across multiple at the same time. Um, one of the advantages of this particular kind of design pattern is that you could 
uh, either you could, in theory, replicate the data across multiple geos. Uh, Nikhil showed a, showed a use case of just US and London, but uh, if you take any other banking application, you have so many uh, trading centers and you could be distributing it in n number of places at the same time because overall when you're, I'm just taking an example, if you're pricing some kind of trade which has multiple legs, you overall want the same kind of data which should be showing up. So you can actually use this kind of design pattern to have that consistency across multiple foundation and not just two. You can actually do this with n number of foundation. The upper limit for us is 255. So yep. it's, a, it's a huge number in terms of PCF foundation. Um, and uh, there's another pattern which is a, a little bit of a derivative of uh, Hub and Spoke, which is follow the sun. This is basically the idea is that you want to have overall business continuity across the globe. And the idea is that there is a token which a cluster would carry, which becomes the master, and that handles all the rights. And all the clusters replicate the data, they are all the same. And then let's suppose eight or 10, 12 hour pass, and it passes the token, and the next cluster starts to handle the data and everyone else is the same. Again, the same logic is eventually the data needs to be same across all your PCF foundation all over the world to give you that consistent results that you expect from your data. So again, hammering the point that this is a CP system, we keep on focusing on this, that we want to have some kind of consistency, or consistency always built into whatever use cases you're trying to solve. That's the first thought that is in our mind. So in conclusion, Multi-cloud the way we started this is that there are so many problems that are there. Multi-cloud multi 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 -cloud strategy is real. You should consider that. If, if you're an enterprise and you're not considering that, think about all the consequences we're, we're gonna have. So it's real, there are many reasons that we should consider this, and uh, you should plan for this, if nothing else. PCC is the facto caching solution on PCF today. And we are the first tile which truly connects multiple PCF foundation. In doing so, we are paving way uh, for other tiles to learn from our experiment and take a lot of lessons out of it. And obviously, um, you might have seen in ONCI's keynote, we are figuring out ways how to enhance this multi-foundation view. PCC started this journey for data, but we are continuing this journey for platform. HealthWatch is just one step. There are multiple things that we want to bring into the product overall to have a good, coherent, multi-cloud strategy. Thank you. We can, we can take some questions. Sure. So uh, PCC does use Gemfire. It's Gemfire under the hood. PCC is the uh, Cloud Foundry de facto implementation on how you make uh, caching in Cloud Foundry available. So we do use Gemfire. That's how we actually are able to achieve all these things. But PCC, is, think of us like what Spring Boot is for Spring. We have a very opinionated way of how you need to deploy clusters. And that's what we do. Yep. Um, now when we talk about multi-cloud, right, right now you only focused on the two cloud teams to the top. What if I want to have one foundation which is running on GPT, another mm -hmm. one running on say an AWS, right? Mm -hmm. And then be able to share the data. How would that yeah. Because at the other sure. end there, you would have the data. Yeah. I we do understand the fact that you know you can have data that yeah. So uh, as I showed you, right, pretty much one of the slides where uh, the prerequisite for setting up WAN is that the VMs which are in one subnet, they need to be routable. So we do support 
uh, between multi different IaaS providers. So it can be your private uh, cloud co connecting to AWS or uh, AWS instance or GCP. So PCC, there is no restrictions of uh, which IaaS it can replicate between. It's only uh, the prerequisite we have is the uh, IP addresses between those two foundations needs to be routable. Yeah. So I do understand that you know you have sort of fans and you can you will actually need uh, the service broker and then you have to manage yep. to you know sort of an application. Yep. Uh, how would that work in other providers? I mean if I'm hosting the applications in that place, how would that work? Because I don't I understand, you know, the pivotal work yep. I don't understand how would that be possible in another platform or another IS. So, like, prerequisite for this is to have a CF foundation, right? So you have AWS running, uh, yeah, PCF running on AWS, also PCF running on, say, GCP. So the way that you interact with PCF foundation doesn't change. You're still using CF commands for enabling WAN replication. That, that's how uh, we have multi-cloud support with PCC. I think uh, I saw a hand at the end. Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't Sorry, get the last part. So what you need is uh, the same region, and you should be able to do that. So like if I have five regions, it's the You basically associate a, a sender to a region, and once you have that, it's up to you how many receivers want to receive those events. So you can configure that. Yeah. So how many foundations can I replicate this? Like, what is the maximum number of foundations I can do this? So the maximum number uh, is, it goes from 0 to 255, so basically two, 256 foundations that you can actually get, in theory, get all these things connected. Um, I haven't, haven't heard a customer who has 256 PCF <laughs> foundations. I hope not. Uh, but we can handle it. <laughs> So PCC is based on uh, a JVM, right? Uh, for us, all the, uh, all the data goes and sits in the JVM. So theoretical limit, what we have today, uh, or the recommendation from the product team is like you can have up to two terabytes worth of a uh, single PCC cluster. So that's the upper limit we, are ha uh, we have set. But there are like some clusters uh, of Gemfire or Apache Geode, which actually goes to 50, 10 terabytes. So for us, since we are opinionated and we do a lot of GC tuning on ourselves, so we say we have upper limit of two terabyte with PCC. Because we actually have test cases which test it's two terabyte. Yeah. Yeah. Is there an affinity between the app and the PCC cluster that you're running that the same PCF instance you're out with versus the flow route, even though they have the same effort across two? Uh, as I said, the platform is still on its journey for multi-cloud. So the platform doesn't really understand that the app needs to talk to another PCF foundation. So right now, the platform, by default, has a strict affinity towards the cluster which is running its own foundation. However, there are technologies like Apigee where you can actually create this affinity map and you can transparently, if, if an app is deployed in one PCF foundation, you can actually make it route to another PCF foundation. But that is not a first class concept in, on the platform by default, but there are definitely other tools that you can create to manage that. But while we are on this journey, we are definitely thinking about problems like this, like the app life cycle from a multi-cloud point of view, the monitoring life cycle from a multi-cloud point of view. So like all these things we will keep on hitting from version to version and uh, as Health Watch is like the first step towards that. Yeah, the scenario is where you could have an app running against its own mm -hmm. cache data and the same cluster is okay, but now that is a shared cache cluster that replicates the 
Exactly. Either if you don't want to push multiple instances to different foundation, which is not wrong. A lot of people do that. You can have a concourse pipeline, which is doing all these things. And that's a perfectly fine pattern as well. It's actually up to you that what ex how much it's the complexity versus uh, what, do you, what exactly are you trying to achieve? Because it it's, can't beat physics. So whatever the limitation of the physical uh, world is, we, we would operate on that. That's a very typical scenario of caching use cases. Like a lot of times, you would actually, in order to avoid mainframe hits, for example, you would cache a data. Uh, you would refresh or load the cache or prime the cache and then just work out of a cache. You can totally do that in PCC. Actually, uh, it, it does, it's not even related to multi-cloud. You can just do it in a single uh, cluster by pushing a custom code, which basically tells PCC how to load this data, and that's pretty much it. Or you can actually have an app that is pushing data to PCC. It doesn't matter which API you use, but it's a typical caching use case. We, just, we are just a hash map, so you can just push the data. Uh, it's not proprietary. Oh, no, sorry, it's not a database. It's, it's file systems. Um, encryption is at rest is definitely an interesting topic that we are looking at. It's, however, not on our roadmap, but we are considering encryption at rest. For now, you can actually encrypt the disks, uh, like the whole storage. You can have encrypted disks, but we are also looking at uh, encryption at rest. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.